some front entrance. I got some aeonium and some pots and some other succulents. And then in this larger pot, I've got um, bougainvillea. I've got some creeping ivy. I'm trying to make it go up this uh, wood beam here so that I can have kind of like a coverage, a privacy screen for the front window. And then I've got some potted succulents up here and um, they extend along this front entrance as well. And I've also got some herbs, I forget what they are, but uh, my uncle gave me to them. They're good for cooking, they smell really nice. Um, some white jasmine as well. I think this is called snake's plant, but it's usually an indoor plant. I had it inside, but then I brought it outside because I think it looks better right there. And then I've got a, jade, a couple jades right here um, and potted plants with uh, gravel. And uh, over here, got a geranium, but in a lantana. This one's really nice. I like the flowers on it and the smell. It's native uh, over in a bunch of parts of Mexico, but super nice plant. I uh, also love the germanium. These are super easily propagatable. I just took one from my other pots and just popped it in there and there she goes. But over here got uh, some more jade, a bromeliad, aeonium, portulungalia. Not sure about some of these names, but some aloe. Um, and some more jade. It then continues over here. Um, this is uh, another succulent with a cypress tree growing out of a pot. Um, it gets watered through a micro sprinkle. Adjustable. Here's my uh, lighting box actually that takes all of my lighting for this front um, front yard. I've got one, two, three, four, and five uh, walk pathway lights. So if you check it out at night, they illuminate this area walking up to the front entrance of the home. And I've got another couple lights on the trees. Here's one to this, um, I call it a nispero in Spanish. I think it's in English. I forget the name for it right now, but um, it's a fruit tree. Super good. It gives like these little orange balls. Um, got a rose under there as well. They both get illuminated at night. And uh, this one here gets watered by a bubbler. Um, and some weeds down there I need to take care of. But yeah, I've got basically on most of the trees, I've got this kind of separation barrier in between mulch or gravel or um, any type of plants um, just so that they can have their own space and I've mulched the area so that they can have nutrients and I'll place uh, you know pellet nutrients for them every couple months so that they can get in the mulch and um, you know keep growing good but uh, for most of these bubblers there's PVC piping running all the way through the ground over to those valves over there um, and I think I've got two valves for the front yard. I used to have uh, grass in here and sprinkles but I took it all out and put a drought tolerant garden and fruit trees and fruit vines and privacy fences so right now I've got a project going for Monday so I've got a bunch of flats here of Daimondia and ice plant um, doing a lawn replacement so we're gonna put those in there and uh, give them a drought tolerant garden that they don't have to water every you know five times a week but over here back to you know where I was uh, where the cypress was I got these basswoods that hopefully will cover this front window pretty soon they've been in there for about five years zoom out or walk back also got some flowering germaniums in there. They get lots of sun. 
uh, that's actually where that one cutting was that was over there in that pot. It's really nice. Um, but yeah, then I've got my time clock right here for the front yard. Um, mostly this front yard, all the fruit trees are on a once a or two times a week heavy watering. And if in the summer it's super hot, I'll put them on a three time a week. They're all on bubblers or on micro sprinkles or drip line. Um, just depends. The bigger ones are on bubblers, smaller ones drip line. And, um, you know, the ones that are on micro sprinkles might be in pots. Um, but yeah, I got some germanium back here as well. This is where the time clock and uh, the sprinkle time clock and the lighting hookup um, got a circuit out here or a, a, what you call it, a plug-in out here for two. So that fits all right for both of them. Got my hose over here. But yeah, this pot was like a $3,000 pot that a client didn't want. Just came up on it. Super nice. Um, you can see it's not like plastic or anything. It's like hard freaking stone. I got some creeping ivy growing down here that I put because some client didn't want to meet as well. Um, you know, just kind of took them out and brought them here. And there was like five of them. Put some drip line on them. And uh, they've been doing all right trying to see if they cover up to that pot and kind of just you know three feet maybe in a square can kind of give me a nice little creeping ivy mat one of them made it over there but I think two died in between but over here I've got my valves um, yeah I got these brass valves usually on everything that I've replaced um, my dad put these cheapy valves all at first um, as I've been getting brass valves taken out of clients and fixing the seals on them or um, you know just buying them um, new I've been replacing them all and um, this one still has the top um, on it the the part that actually connects with the sprinkle cock um, but that's just because of what I had uh, when it broke but um, I had an extra but usually I'll put brass valves on them because they last much more years. This one's got a filter. Uh, my dad likes using filters. Uh, not really necessary on drip lines and this stuff, but there she goes. This is where the hose connects and the main water for the house comes in. Um, yeah, that's where the sprinkles all come out from. Uh, you know, I got my shut off there, so if I want to do any front yard work and then that sprinkle goes down all the way into the front yard and extends in you know three different ways one going to the succulent garden and pipe going to all these different fruit trees or out of the pipes I've got different uh, things to bring micro sprinkle or drip line to them so in these other pots <coughs> I've got some aeonium growing in Usually these are my mother tree, Aeonium. I'll you know, put a bunch of different Aeonium in pots, um, or I'll put a bunch of different Aeonium for clients, sell it to them. Um, but yeah, this is just a couple different succulents that I didn't want to throw away that I put in here. Um, we got a pot over here because nothing grows, and we got a door here to go to the side of the home where I store stuff and it just, you know, it doesn't work having a privacy hedge growing there. But I've got my privacy hedge on the right side of the home that blocks from the neighbor. It's flowering right now. It's Japanese privet hedge. It's about four foot high. Probably needs a good trimming, but it's gonna wait until the flower's gone. Over there, by, in front of the cypress tree, I've got some aeonium. Usually I like those under my fruit trees because they flower really nice with yellow flower that attracts a lot of bees for the fruit trees. But right there, I've got a pomegranate. It was planted as a five gal. It's getting pretty big. Gave uh, pomegranates already two years, about five years old. No, maybe three, maybe three from when I planted it. This one was planting some seed. Um, actually, I remember the name for it. They're called loquats. 
but this loquat tree is a male, so it doesn't get fruit. But it was planted from a seed that I got actually from this guy, which is crazy because it's smaller. Uh, and that's a female that gives fruit, which has a rose under it, like I said. Um, this is the lime tree, Mexican lime, um, planted as a five gal. It's still pretty young, it's about two, maybe a year and a half old actually. And over here we got a cypress tree, lemon lime cypress tree. Um, this is kind of like the other cypress tree, but um, it's known for its distinctive color. Uh, usually it's really bushy, but because it's growing under this huge oak, um, I'm not sure if I can zoom out all the way, but it's about a 50 or 60 foot oak. Um, you know, it doesn't get much of the sun as my other clients. Uh, tree gets and you know it, they were planted around the same time and my other clients is about four times is uh bushy so but it's getting tall and uh you know hopefully i can decorate it for christmas and make it nice for my mom but over here let's see i've got a couple fruit trees i think over there i've got a cherry and right here i've got a apricot let me just see i think uh or a nectarine let me see the name of it, just so you guys can know what it is. Double Delight Nectarine. This one was picked up from uh, uh, Osh, and it's uh, done pretty well. It was picked up uh, Bear Root Ball, and it's doing really well. Um, you know, there uh, looks like it's actually uh, growing around the region. But over here. I'm not sure what this tree is. Actually, I've got it for five bucks um, at a nursery auction that was going out of business. So, um, but it's a nice tree. It gives these cool little berries. Um, I think it might be a cherry laurel, but don't quote me on that because I actually think I have one of those over there. But they might be the same tree. Um, so over here, I've got a couple in cherry. Hasn't fruited yet, but it's been growing here about uh, six months, really well. And it's going. It's about a 15, nah, about a 10 gallon now. So it's probably doubled in size. And over here, sorry, a lot of car passed by. But over here, we've got an azalea that I need to take some of the flowers out because it's, you know, going to look better when you do that. But it, it only got a few flowers on it still right now. But um, just a month ago, it was the whole circle was, was, uh, flowering and it was all pink and that's actually why I haven't trimmed it yet because it hasn't stopped flowering but this is supposed to be an ornamental ball and we're going to probably prop it up in the next month over here I got a blue juniper cypress um, this is also a different colored cypress that's blue sorry the sun's in the way so kind of hard to see it but this one can also grow about 20 feet tall um, or 15 feet I think that one I actually think grows 20 feet tall the flood and lime and um you know the cypress over there can grow about 60 that's the italian and that one's the most common one that you'll see these two are kind of rare the blue and the lemon lime but they're really good varieties and also drought tolerant so out here in the front yard i've got um, japanese privet hedge as well this one's about six years old and they were all planted at one gallows even the hedge over there and, um, you know, they give some privacy to the house so that um, people aren't looking in all the time trying to steal my fruit or steal anything else. So, uh, you know, they also clean the air uh, like any other plant. And they flower really nice with this, you know, check out this white flower. Beautiful white flower over here. Um, it attracts the bees to your fruit trees and, um, you know, gives you some nice... Uh, something nice to look at um, to block out other people's view as well so then you know if I come along here along the front of this hedge you'll see that it extends you know with other kind of one gallons all the way on the right side but here I've got a ch uh, cherry laurel um, these are really nice trees really beautiful tree um, hasn't flowered yet also picked up at auction for around like 10 bucks I think super skinny still really small all these plants at the nursery that i picked up were heavily uh not taken care of i would say 
here I've got a Mexican cacti. It was brought in actually kind of illegally. My dad brought it in. They didn't want to let him bring it in from Mexico um, because of various agricultural laws, which I understand, but God was chill, let him bring it in. Now we have a uh, cacti from our hometown, or from his hometown, Guanajuato, Mexico, uh, or state, I would say. But these cacti are really good, um, really easy to peel. It looks like they're hard, but because they have these kind of little if you see this bump here, you know, you take your knife when you're peeling them and you really easily can take that out and take the spine out. So, you know, really easy to peel, not as much hard, not as hard as the punti that has a lot of easy or a lot of small little spines that, uh, you know, get in your fingers even though you got gloves. These have a little bit less of those spines. Um, if you don't, you know, if I get up close, you don't see too many of them on the leaf itself. So these are a great plant to have but uh, unfortunately they're not available in America as readily but I've been actually thinking maybe of selling them um, to other gardeners so we'll see how that goes I got started on my ladder over here <laughs> over here we've got a grapefruit tree we've got some grapefruits on it check it out these get huge these can get the size of you know a human's uh, face um, and these, you know, this tree produces easily every time it's fruiting, maybe 50 grapefruits. Probably got 20 on it right now. And if you see here at the bottom, it's mulched with this brown mulch so that it can uh, get some fertilizer. And it's also on a bubbler system. Most of my fruit trees are on a single trunk, but I like having the lime trees on double or triple trunks um i don't know why but um if you're in between one and three trunks for a fruit tree you're doing all right so this uh grapefruit tree here is probably around six or seven years old probably around six feet high it's about eight foot stick two feet in the ground um and it's going going pretty well let me see if i can zoom out for you So that's it right there. Over here is my biggest tree in the front yard. It's the plum tree. Uh, let me see if I can get a good zoom out for it too. Well, that tree is about 15 feet higher, I would say. And at the base, it's also mulched and got a, a bubbler. Um, and this bubbler actually um, has a drip line connected to it so that it gets extra water. It has a drip line in the middle of the PVC and the bubbler. So if you see here, the PVC comes up into this uh, adapter. It brings out a drip line and then it has a bubbler. So it waters with the bubbler and then the drip line turns on to water it slowly as well and have a lot of that water soaking. Here we've got uh, some iris. It's probably uh, done flowering but it had some really nice purple and white flowers uh, a couple weeks ago and this aeonium also lots of other plants that have been taken succulents for other people um and giving it to them for free or selling it to them but these produce an amazing yellow flower tracks dozens and dozens of bees so beautiful but this also has a light um, i'll see if i can get some a video or a picture of the lighting in the front yard at night but you know most of these fruit trees I want to see if I can get on a light they're pointed up so that you know it doesn't get in your eyes but it, it illuminates the tree you know and I, I put all of that myself as well over here on the other loquat we do have a lighting as well and a bubbler system this tree we call it in Spanish Papa de Vaca um, not sure what it's called in English. Um, what would that be? Cow's um, feet. That's probably what it's called in English too. But this, let's call it cow's feet. Trees, a really nice tree. It's got a really nice um, single trunk. Bought it for 20 bucks at that nursery auction, and uh, it does really well here. Um, probably planted a little bit too high, as you can see the roots are here. But it was in a box that. You know, probably made it super root bound because it's about a 
15 foot tree and it was in a 24 inch container but now it's prospered it had no leaves and none of those branches were there only you know, it was only up to here and it had maybe one branch with no leaves and I took a chance on it and there it goes but check out the leaf on it it's a, it looks like a cow's foot <laughs> what we call it uh, what we call it but really nice plant let me see if it's got the name on it no but actually this is the Burkhardt Nurseries is where I got all of these at an auction um, for like 5 to 20 bucks each so a lot of these plants and if you can find a nursery auction you've come out come through I had a um, another Christmas tree here that I planted and got at that auction but it died um, it, it made it for a few months but um, you can see here I cut the stake in the trunk because uh, it just didn't make it didn't look nice and uh, it was starting to look like crap so I took it out I think it was a star a pine tree which are really beautiful trees and it was growing really had some flowers or some leaves on it but it didn't make it that auction uh, auction uh, plants from that tree were really badly taken care of that's probably why they went out of business but probably not maybe they they were just plants and nobody bought uh, you know maybe you know people go out of business for retirement or all types of other reasons you know not because they suck at growing plants but um so yeah that's the front yard all those pots flats for now I got gravel so I've got border, boarding border yard I think they call it that goes along all this privet hedge in an L form and I've got uh, border separation for most of these trees except some of these um, the later ones I haven't put them on there uh, just because I want to put this whole area that's gravel to mulch one day but my dad I just need to convince him he doesn't really want to do it now he likes the gravel we used to have grass here like I mentioned so um, he likes not maintaining the stuff even the gravel you got to kind of pick it pick some weeds and stuff time at a time but it's better for the trees so I've also got rocks in between uh, various points just kind of you know rocks I've picked up to just kind of make the garden a little bit nicer um, but yeah that border separation provides a weed separation from it coming into the gravel or the mulch or whatever you're trying to separate so that's really nice here's a quick overview you know just of this part of the yard so over here on the left of my flagstone pathway I had that uh, my buddy Arlux built um, super good builder um, I didn't have time to do it and guy hooked it up great price and uh, he used the stone that I had here did a great job um, so here I've got I'm not sure what type of tree it is actually also picked up at the auction not labeled um, but it flowers in this red uh, it's got red flowering what, what, what is it called um, so when the new leaves come out during um, a certain season I think it's spring uh, that just passed they're red and this is actually used as a hedge in a lot of spots um, it's not doing too well actually um, it looks like I probably need to fertilize it or um, give it some something but it looks like a type of pest is on it probably spider mites or a white fly uh, if you see let me try to get closer over here probably looks like white fly or maybe some type of insect but yeah, it's not doing too well. It was doing a little bit better when it was uh, getting its leaf change. But its leaves turn red, and it's used as a hedge sometimes. And you can have, during that season, a red hedge. That's super cool. Um, but over here, I've just got normal three-fourths gravel on my flea yard. But over here, I put some Cali rock. I love it when it's watered. And just a couple extra flagstones it had um, to make a path from the driveway over to the front. Um, and that takes us to the backyard as well. So this, uh, let me see if I can get an overview of the flagstone walkway. This is, you know, it comes from the front of the home all the way to the front. To this kind of porch area where I've got a lot of potted plants and a little bench that me and my dad built. And that goes to the front door. So then, you know, I have a mailbox over there, 
but the guy never sees it. So I put it over here, and I think it's actually pretty cool because now he comes through my garden and looks at it. So, fuck it. <laughs> Sorry for cursing. <laughs> Anyways, um, over here got some dragon fruit. Also, a fruit tree gives a uh, great fruit. Um, but yeah, it gives these red fruit that's really good. Sometimes they're purple. It's super slow grower. It's been here like two years and it probably has only grown that branch and this branch. That's it. Two branches. I got this fig tree that I've got as a five gal also fruiting. Um, it's already fruited. It does a really good job here. Um, got some succulents here. I forget the name for that one actually. I'm supposed to know that one super easily. But got the basswoods here. Small little ball hedge that usually is in an ornamental ball here we try to just keep it in whatever form uh, distracts from the pathway um, and over here we've got a fruiting banana tree um, I'm trying to train it to be on one trunk um, by taking out all these offshoots here uh, but it's also been here for like two years and grown like nothing so I don't know how how successful I'll be with that. But this little banana tree, um, you know, hopefully I've seen them in LA region about 15 feet high giving a little, you know, six inch, nine inch bananas. They're a different quality than the ones you'll see in the supermarket, but they're super good. I think they're called Cavendish uh, bananas, but they're good. I got another aloe here and uh, some rosemary, I think. This one's super good for smell. I want to make some soap out of it. But I wash my hands if you just kind of go like that and rub it in with some water. It smells really good. And I got some cacti here um, that clients have given me over the time. They're really nice. And some sucking rock. And a palm tree here. What's up, Benji? This palm tree doesn't really do well because it's also under this oak. It's about only six foot high. It's not super big, but I like it. Gives a nice little addition to the succulent garden. Or it's not really succulent garden, you know, it's got two fruit trees and you know basswood, but it's got succulents and so that's why I call it refer to it as the succulent garden. But yeah, it gives it a nice little edge. But yeah, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that that was my plum tree, but that plum tree is huge. It gives like hundreds and hundreds of plums every year. So that's uh, my front yard. Um, I'll do another video of the backyard pretty soon. Um, and those are my dogs behind the, the privacy fence. But yeah, just wanted to give you guys a little tour of the front yard. Show you guys uh, how it's coming along. It's going really nice. Let's get a view of this oak real quick. And we'll be out.